sorry, I got uh, distracted for a second by mixing up A and A to the minus one. So, um, and then accidentally hit the stop button. So um, I'm continuing a new session now. So what we would like to do is we uh, have an inverse problem defined as usual. So um, uh, everything is as in the definition of the inverse problem of the improper, improperly posed problem. A to the minus one exists. So the first conditions of Hadamard are satisfied, but uh, it's discontinuous with respect to some norms in X and Y. And we want to show that you can easily come up with a new norm in Y such that A to the minus one becomes continuous. Okay, so uh, then define the triple norm on a triple norm in y uh, on a, on a, some vector y and this is defined as the normal norm oops excuse me as the norm y norm of y plus the norm of a to the minus 1y for any y in y um, now, this is a reasonably defined norm. And uh, now let's uh, look at continuity. And uh, let's, in this new norm, let's compute the operator norm. This is the soup. X not equal to, uh, Y not equal to zero, excuse me. And a to the minus one norm of a to the minus one y and now in the old norm x over a to the minus one y and this is in the new norm that we defined above and uh, but this over here is nothing but a to the minus one y in x over, uh, you see, I, I don't see why I'm writing this down. Now this over here is smaller, uh, smaller than one. It's, even, it's really smaller than one. Also, that means that uh, the sub is smaller than one, and that means that a to the minus one is continuous. So uh, that means that we, for any uh, nonlinear operator, we can easily come up uh, for any, excuse me, uh, for any discontinuous operator, we can easily come up with a norm that makes it continuous as long as that operator is linear. Uh, with nonlinear operators, it's a little bit different thing. Okay, uh, so uh, the thing is that continuity um, depends on the norms, and the question is, does that help us? And let me just note, no, that doesn't help solving our problem. Why? Well, what we're really interested in is a remark that I just made. And this is the one over here. In fact, we're not really interested in continuity. We're interested in this inequality. That norm A is the error amplification factor. And for that to be useful, uh, we need some kind of estimate on the data. That's the one over here. So we cannot choose any norm we want. Rather, we need to use uh, the norm that the experimentator can give us an estimate for. And so we always assume that norms are given by the application and cannot easily be used by us or cannot easily be redefined by us. Now, uh, another thing um, which is probably completely clear, but uh, anyway, we will make use of something like that. Uh, another remark if x is infinite dimensional.
then there exists a linear operator A from X to Y, which is discontinuous. Now, the proof is very simple. Since X is infinite dimensional, that means that there's a linearly independent system of elements Xn in X. Um, which is um, um, for n in n, which is linearly independent. Now, obviously, define the norm of Axn as n times some unit vector in Y. And, uh, well, obviously make it a linear operator. So A of sum of some, well, you know how to do this from uh, linear algebra. Oh, excuse me, that was not meant to be like that. A X N is N times Y. A of sum over lambda i x i as sum over lambda i a x i, which has been defined above, uh, for all finite uh, for all finite sums, and uh, uh, zero if uh, any operator cannot if uh, any um, element of y cannot be written in this form, then this is a properly defined linear operator. And obviously, we have that the norm of AXN over the norm, uh, I forgot something, linearly independent. And we choose, we, chose, we choose these such that these are unit vectors. And uh, because I always, uh, <laughs> of course, I need this now, norm AXN over norm XN is N, which tends to infinity. For, for yeah, which tends to infinity, map. and that means that norm AXN over norm XN is unbounded, or that the operator norm is unbounded, or that A is discontinuous. So that's a very simple example, which you can always come up very easily. If you have an infinite dimensional um, space, whatever space, then uh, there are um, discontinuous linear operators. On the other hand, what you know from uh, linear algebra, let me also write this down, when x is finite dimensional, that of course means that all linear operators are continuous. Okay, so uh, these were some remarks about norms. And uh, I've already announced this. Uh, so I think that's the definition. And I will put this in parentheses because I will not be very exact. We will give a very exact mathematical definition for this one a little bit later. But um, let me already prepare this. Um, we call, yeah, 
Assume that x is a function space. Function spaces. And um, let assume that, um, yeah. Uh, how do I go about that and um, look at the inverse problem? Ax equals y. Uh, now, we already noticed uh, that, uh, for example, that uh, if we take a stronger norm in Y, we can make that problem continuous. So, um, yeah, we did this up here, right? Uh, where did we do it? With the definition? Uh, yeah, over here. So, we defined a stronger norm in Y. And then our problem suddenly became continuous. So um, that that might include, for that could be um, first derivative or something. So we define the order of ill postness. Oops. M. If um, and, and we uh, inverse y a the first excuse me the first uh, two conditions of Hadamard should be satisfied, and uh, a, a to the minus one should exist, but it's discontinuous. Okay, for the order of ill postness, if um, uh, I was almost done without problems. Okay, so if a to the minus one. is continuous, continuous, uh, when adding the, uh, um, the norms of derivatives up to order m and discontinuous for order m minus 1 then a min a m min a to the minus 1 is improper or the prob the inverse problem is ill post of order m. This is roughly the definition that Hadamard gives for the um, for the um, um, uh, for the order of uh, ill postness. And what what exactly does that mean? Well, we define a new norm in Y as above. And it's the old norm. Let's, now let's do this on a fun, function space. Yeah. 
Oops. I'm doing it. So let's take f a f equals to g, uh, and that's a function space. And we define a new norm in g, in in y, as the norm of g in y as above. So that was. What we did above was we took uh, the norm of G and then added some uh, some norm uh, or depending on F. And here we use, for example, we use the norm of F prime. Now, if the problem is, uh, this is an X, this is uh, the Y norm, and this is an X norm. Now, if the problem is discontinuous with just using the y norm, and it becomes continuous if we add up the um, the norm of the first derivative, we say that this one is improperly posed. Then this has the order one. If it becomes continuous, if we define this plus the second derivative, then we say this is of order two. And so on, right? I mean, if it's, uh, if it's discontinuous with respect to this norm, excuse me, If it's discontinuous with uh, respect to this this norm, but continuous with respect to this norm, then it's improperly posed of order two. And we somehow have the feeling that taking the first derivative is all is already difficult. Taking the second derivative is even more difficult. So if something only becomes uh, continuous when adding the second derivative, we assume that it's probably going to be even harder to solve that problem. So the higher the order is, we believe that the higher the order, we uh, the um, more difficult it will be, to, will be to actually solve that problem. OK, um, examples. Oops. First example, inverse problems of integration. Well, um, of course, for, for the inverse problem of, in uh, of, um, uh, of uh, integration is differentiation. So, this definitely has order one. We already noticed that uh, if we add the first derivative in the in the y uh, space uh, to the norm, then everything becomes continuous. So this is exactly uh, the, the definition we have. Now, uh, for the second part, what about the inverse problem of the diffusion equation? Uh, I'm not going to prove it, but uh, you see, you saw that there was something like an exponential over there uh, um, when uh, trying to give bounds on uh, uh, on the uh, um, on the, the error on the on the magnification of the error on uh, error amplification, and um, so we somehow expect that uh, this is going to be a very very hard problem. Right, it doesn't get multi the error doesn't get multiplied with a polynomial or something, but it really gets multiplied with an exponential, and it turns out that uh, this never get this has infinite order. So whatever um, um, derivative we add, it never becomes uh, it never becomes continuous. So this is exponentially. Ill post. And let me give you a result that we are going to prove much, much later for the radon transform.
it turns out that uh, the inverse problem is actually ill-posed, but it's even simpler to solve the radon transform for F, for the to, to solve the inverse problem with the radon transform, than taking the first derivative. It turns out that the order is one half in a sense that we will have to define. Okay, let me check that this is what I wanted to say at this point. I think it is. So, yeah, let me stop.